Hi guys, I want to talk a little bit about my spindle kits. Um, I just want to go over what's in them and then I also wanted to um, put a correction out for a few of you that ordered a spindle kit from me but did not receive uh, an image in the instructions for what the drafting zone looks like. Um, so First of all, um, my spindle kit is a beginner spindle kit. It comes with a wooden spindle with a leader attached. This is a fiber art supply wooden spindle, and it is really a perfect spindle for learning how to spin. I include four different kinds of wool in my spinning kits. I always include a merino. Uh, it does vary in color. This one's a mixed, oh, mixed merino butterfly bush, I believe is what it's called. I have a blue faced Leicester. This is a natural mixed color, natural dark, natural light blended together on a carding machine. And I have Falkland, which is a lovely wool to spin. It's, it's really nice because it's a uh, medium, medium soft and medium length, and it, uh, it, it moves through your hands very easily, but not so easily that it's slippery. And it's, it's uh, just a really pretty wool, nice and easy to work with. And then the last wool that I currently have in my spindle kits is this Gray Jacob. And this Gray Jacob is the one I really wanted to talk about today, um, along with the missing picture in the instructions for some of you, unfortunately. Um, so this wool is Jacob and it is um, interesting and I think fun. And um, also I think um, a really good intro to wool because it's got Kemp in it. So I did two different orders of Jacob, two different uh, one was a white and gray natural mix, kind of like this BFL. It came off the carter like this. Um, and, and then I also did this full gray one. Um, and they both had Kemp in them. And I know that Jacob Sheep do have Kemp. Uh, the, the fleece that I worked uh, not too long ago had a lot of Kemp around the neck area. And um, it was easy when I was working from just a full fleece because I could target that area and pull out all the Kemp before I sent it through a carter or anything like that. But um, that did not happen for this Jacob at whatever mill it was processed at. So um, it's got Kemp in it and it's, it's not a lot. It's, it's a little bit and it's really easy to see. But um, when I, I got the first batch, I thought, oh, I wasn't sure if I wanted to include that in my spindle kits. Um, then I thought immediately after that, that this was a great intro to wool and what wool is really like and what you should expect from different kinds of breeds. Um, and also expect for um, what you might be looking at for fiber prep. Um, as you move along in your spinning journey. You're gonna run into all different kinds of wool, coarsenesses, softness, length, um, and then all just quality within that, what, what you find in it, like vegetable matter, um, bugs sometimes, dead bugs, like not infestation type, but bugs that were on the fleece uh, when the sheep was wandering around the pasture, grazing, living. Uh, um, living its life and um, the things that, that happen out in the wild. <laughs> so you get all kinds of different things on fleece um, that sometimes we don't see because we buy just the, the pre-processed. Anyways, I thought this camp was a wonderful insight into uh, what the wool is really like on a sheep. So um, if you look at it closely, you will see little hairs that are thicker and they're darker, either darker, um, like a dark gray, blackish color or white. And let me see if I can find something. Um, here we 
here's one. Here's a really good one. Actually, let's see if, oh, can you see it right here? It's kind of, it's kind of hard to see. Um, they, they are, um, like I said, not too many of them, but they're definitely in there. And I wanted to point out that, um, I love that. I love that about this wool. This is, it's real wool off of real sheep. And that's just sometimes how it comes. Um, it doesn't mean that it's not good wool. It just means that that is a characteristic either of the breed sometimes or, um, just uh, it, 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 it didn't get processed out and that's okay because as spinners we um prepping fiber is going to be a big part of your spinning job <laughs> hopefully you're spinning fun i do enjoy prepping fiber because i just love to get my hands on the wool um so anyways my suggestion to you is if you don't want to spin it up which Probably most of us don't really want a, a, a bunch of Kemp in our um, fresh hand spun um, because those pieces, especially since it's it's not a really coarse wool, those little pieces are gonna really show through and pop up and they might be a little bit scratchy too. So my suggestion is, this is what I would do. I would start at one end and I would start on one side and stay on that side and I would just go through like this and literally just pick it out as you see it. Oh, there's a little piece right there. Let's see. Can you see that? Just little pieces of thicker wool. So you can go through the whole section. This is one ounce of wool. You can go through all the way down and start pulling them out by hand. You can also, oh, there's a big one. You can also uh, start spinning it. And as you come to them in your spinning, just pull them out then, especially if you're using a drop spindle in this kit. Um, you, you're gonna be going slow and you're gonna be I'm um, stopping to wind on and things like that, stopping and starting a bit. Um, and it's not really a problem to just stop and pull a little piece of Kemp out. And while it might seem slightly annoying at first, it, it really is something that you get used to quick. <laughs> um, I am just making my way all the way down. So what I would do is go all the way down, pick out this, all the Kemp that I can visually see on this side, and then I would flip the side and either start at the other end or this end. Just make sure you're on the, up, the back side, not the side you just checked, the back side. Um, and go all the way down again, picking out little pieces of camp, and then your fiber will be ready to spin. And it's just that easy. So I didn't want, I wanted to uh, address that little, um, possible oddity people might think it's a little bit odd if you're a beginner spinner and you're not used to dealing with um, different kinds of wool and the conditions of wool and um, some of the natural things that happen with wool um, the other thing i wanted to talk about is this little graphic um, i had some spindle kits go out and i had done several drafts and rearranging of my instructions and um, somehow I missed including this picture in the instructions it actually says refer to the picture and there was no picture and I printed up some of them and some unfortunately got sent out that way <clears throat> but this is the picture it's of the drafting zone um, when you're spinning. If you did get a spindle kit and you did not receive that in your kit and you would like to have it, um, feel free to email me and I will send that out. I'll, I'll email it to you directly. So um, I apologize for that. I hope it didn't impede. I don't think it really would impede learning how to spin. 
but um, it did say it was there and it was not, so I apologize. Well, I hope you guys enjoy the spindle kits, and if you are watching this and you have not purchased a spindle kit from me, I have my spindle kits for sale um, at, on Etsy, or feel free to contact me directly at my email, and um, I can invoice you and send you a spindle kit if you're interested in that. All right, I'll talk to you guys later.